Welcome to lesson 8. In this video, we'll be looking at real examples by showcasing the Paystar template. This template uses the Stripe Marketplace Express plugin, and examining it will help you gain a better understanding of how to use the Stripe plugin in a real world app. So, without further ado, let's get started with this lesson. So, what exactly is the Paystar template used for? So this template has a set of payment solutions that are suitable for a variety of needs. All you have to do is to choose the solution you need and copy it in whole or partially into your bubble app and then make any needed changes. Another benefit of this template is that it has pre-made UI elements which are fully customizable. So in this lesson, we'll only look at the following payment solutions being subscriptions, split payments, as well as coupons. So let's first see a live example of subscription payments in this template. Then we'll later see how the workflows are configured. So we can start by clicking on the Try Now button. On the next page, we can see that there are three active plans, but we can create our own plan by clicking on the Add button. But please note that this feature of adding plans is suitable for an admin panel if your app has one. So we can proceed by clicking on this add button. On this page, we can create the actual plan by filling in the name, the price, the recurring interval, as well as the interval between subscription billing. And this simply refers to the number of intervals between subscription billings. In other words, if the recurring interval is monthly, as we have it here, and we set the interval count to three, then that means that the customer will be billed every three months. Lastly, you can add features separated by commas and afterwards we can click on the create subscription button. After the plan has been created, we'll need to activate it by clicking on the activate button and we need to choose a plan which will replace it. Once we have selected the plan, you can see that this is our new list of active plans and we can subscribe to a plan like this or we can unsubscribe to a plan like this. But how is this all achieved within the workflows? Let's see. So when the create subscription button is clicked, we are using an action that creates a plan. And you can find this action by typing in plan and the action will show up here. And this plan is being created using the information that's been captured by the form. And you'll notice that the unit amount or price of the plan is multiplied by 100. That's because this field should have the amount in cents. Next, we are creating a new subscription in the database, the same way you would create a new thing within the database. And we're also doing that by using the information that's been captured by the form. And you'll notice that the Stripe subscription ID is taken from step two. And that's how a subscription plan is created. But you'll remember that after we created a plan in the demo example, we had to activate it. Let's see how that is accomplished. So when the activate button is clicked, this pop-up appears on the screen, which is the pop-up that allowed us to replace an active plan with a plan that we'd like to add. And when the replace button is clicked, we are simply removing an active plan from the current user in step one. And in the second step, we are adding a new plan. Finally, you'll remember that we had an option to subscribe to a new plan or unsubscribe from a plan. Let's see how that's done. So when the subscribe button is clicked, one of two workflows gets triggered. One workflow subscribes the current user to a plan and the other workflow unsubscribes the current user from a plan. So if a user would like to subscribe to a new plan that they are not yet subscribed to, this workflow gets triggered. And within this workflow, we are first updating a subscription and some fields have been set up such as the subscription ID, the plan ID, and the card ID. And similar fields have been set up within the next step. And this step creates the subscription. If you would like to know how to find these actions, you can type in update, or you can type in create to find the action that creates a subscription. Then on the next step, we are making changes to the current user by changing the current subscription of the user to the selected plan. 
But if a user would like to unsubscribe from a plan, then this workflow gets triggered. And in the first step, it simply updates the subscription. And then in the next step, it simply clears the subscription plan from the current user. And that's how the workflows are configured for subscription plans. So it's now time to have a look at split payments. So we can click on the Try Now button to start the process. Next, we will need to enter the platform commission value, which is a percentage, and then click on the Pay button. Afterwards, we can fill in the checkout form and then click the Pay button. Next, we can click to complete authentication. And as you can see on the screen, the customer paid $100 and the platform received $10 since a 10% commission was taken and the seller received the remaining $90. But how is this configured within the workflows? Let's check. So when the pay button is clicked, we are first creating a session and several fields have been set up. And again, the price amount is in cents. So 10,000 cents is equivalent to $100. And since this is a split payment, you'll notice that the application fee amount has been filled in, which should also be in cents. And if the rest of the funds are for a connected seller account, then the seller ID also needs to be filled in, as you can see here. And on the next step, we are making changes to the current user by setting the intent ID and the session ID from step one. Then on the final step, we are going to checkout. And this action is linked to an SCA element, which has been placed on the page. And as you can see, the session ID from step one has been filled in, as well as the seller ID. And just with these few steps, a split payment will be processed. So we have had a look at subscriptions and split payments, but how do coupons work? Let's now see an example of that by clicking on the Try Now button. As you can see, we have an option of using an existing coupon, or we can create our own coupon by clicking on the Add button. Next, you can fill in the form to add details about the coupon and then click on the submit button. Once the coupon is created, we can use it by clicking on the use button. Again, the checkout form will need to be completed. But before we make payment, I'd like to pay your attention on the details. As you can see, the demo product has an initial cost of $1,000. But since we're using the promo coupon, we have $10 off of this price. So that's why the total due is $990. Now we can click on the pay button and then click to complete authentication. And just like that, the coupon will be applied. So let's now see how the workflows are set up for coupons. So when this add button is clicked, this pop-up will be shown, which allowed us to create a coupon. And when this submit button is clicked, we are first converting the redeem date to a Unix timestamp if that value is not empty. And you can find this action by typing in Unix and the action will be shown as you can see here. On the next step, we are using an action that creates the actual coupon. And this action uses the information that's captured by the form. And if you notice, we have two workflows that creates the coupon. The first workflow creates the coupon if the coupon uses a percentage. Then the next step creates the coupon if the coupon uses a fixed amount. And you can find this action by typing in coupon. The action will be shown like this. And as we remember, after the coupon was created, we were able to click on the use button in order to use it. So when we click on use, the first step is creating a session. And within this action, we need to add the ID of the coupon within this field. The last step is to go to checkout. And this action is linked to an SEA element, which is also placed on the page. Then lastly, we're adding the session ID from step one. And just like that, a coupon will be applied to the payment. And that concludes the Paystart template. And we hope that examining this template helped you to gain a better understanding of how to use the Stripe Marketplace Express plugin.